Hi guys, I showed you this little car that I picked up at the recycling centre in a box full of other bits and pieces. It appears to be infrared, looking at that little red window on the back. I put fresh batteries in it and I tried it with all my infrared transmitters and all my uh, TV remotes and that sort of thing and nothing seems to make it work. So we'll take it apart. Now the only problem we've got is the sun is streaming in through the window, which is unusual, but it also means we might get some shadows. So I'll carry on, but we'll just have to see whether we can see in the dark or in the shadows. is made in China. I did check the batteries. I'll just check them again. Yeah, they're going into the good range, which is interesting simply because this one was in the recycling centre. They've usually been dumped there for quite a while. Okay, one screw on the back. That's the speaker. Yeah, that's an infrared sensor. An infrared control board. Looks like it's been trodden on, the axle looks like it's bent. Let me take that off. Uh, let's have a look, where does the motor go? Motor wires. Uh, let's take it off and have a look. Had a break, gone and had coffee, been out and about, come back and we're going to have another look at this. I'm going to edit out a lot of the video I've already done because I went down some blind alleys or red herrings. We've got it apart. This is the infrared sensor, standard three pin item. In there, there's a speaker. That's the motor gearbox there. When I took the motor out, I found it got a screw jammed in it, so it wasn't turning. That screw should be in there, so at some time in the past that's dropped out and jammed in the motor. So I got all excited, hoping that might have been the problem. So I went and checked all my infrared transmitters again, and it made absolutely no difference. Uh, logically, we ought to have had sound effects even if the motor wasn't turning, so I was getting over hopeful there. So as usual I've got an infrared system here that I've got no infrared transmitters that will talk to it. But I can confirm the motor actually works. I put a battery across it and proved it works anyway. But if I go down to the circuit board I can actually start it turning. I've got this jumper lead connected to negative or ground or earth. And if I go on here, we're going one way. And if I go on here, we're going the other way. So we do have forwards and backwards. I had hoped that by poking around here, I might have been able to activate the sound effects, but I've had no luck with that at all. I, mean, I have no idea of the circuitry anyway, but logically it would be a ground signal somewhere that ought to trigger the sound effects. 
but no, nothing does that. All we do is get the motor running. Which is a bit of a shame. It would have been nice to have got some sound out of it. I'm probably blowing it up by poking zero volts in various places. But to be honest, I'm not that fussed. I think one of these turns the motor again. Yeah, that one does. So some of these little surface mount transistors will be the H bridge. And as I say, we can drive the motor both directions. We can't generate any sound. Shame. So that's as far as we can go really. All I can do now, that's interesting, that's that one, that's the other one. Um, what I can do now is put it back together. I've got a choice, I can either swap that out for a normal 27 megahertz receiver that has really not much point. It's only going to go forwards and backwards anyway. It would be nice to get the sound effects working, but I can't seem to trigger them. So it's junk really. But we do have a little geared motor. Um, although looking at that, you can see the axles broke bent. Somebody's trodden on it at some time. I suspect I could straighten that with a pair of pliers. Um, I suppose disassembly point of view, we've got the pinion gear on there. That drives that one. Then there's a gear on the side of that that drives another gear that's actually on the axle. So we've got a bit of reduction there to give it a little bit of power. And that's it. Uh, being as I'm going to edit out most of the other stuff, I'm not sure what that black blob is. I'm guessing it might be a thermal fuse or something, or voltage regulator. Well, it won't be a voltage regulator, but it might be some sort of thermal cutout or something. But that's straight on the negative side of the battery. Interestingly enough, the negative is the one that goes to the on off switch. Uh, as I said, that's the infrared receiver or sensor. That's obviously the receiver. Black blob for the decoder. And surface mount transistors for the H bridge. And a speaker up there. That's it. I'll put it back together. Just before I put the lid back on, or the cover back on. So, frustrating. But we're not going to get it going unless we can find a matching uh, infrared transmitter. tried everything that I've got. So that's just going to go in my scrap box. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily. So don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. My second channel, Grandad's Other Channel, is where I put the longer videos with more detail. Then there's my Facebook page and you can follow me on Twitter. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar 
on Patreon to buy me coffee. And if you fancy some Grandad merchandise, I have two shops. One on Redbubble and the other on Cotton Car. Finally, you can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.